always. This is great. What? Oh, it's seven o'clock already. Oh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the fourth edition of Bill Apter's video magazine podcast down here at Apter's Alley. And every week I've been reading before I uh, go on. And this is one of the collector's items that I have down here in uh, Apter's Alley. And it's the it's a Japanese magazine, the Wrestler 1000. And I'm not sure what year this was done, but it was, oh, I have to adjust the comb over it now that I'm seeing myself here. All right, that's fine. Um, so this magazine, the editor, and I, I see your messages, but we're going to go through the format later on. We'll have a uh, Ask Me Anything after our guests come on. But this was put together by uh, Wally Yamaguchi, who was the editor of so many wrestling magazines in Japan. He was like, uh, I always tell people that what I do is very unique. Well, he was the guy in Japan that did the same job I did here for the magazines, but he did them in Japan. And that this is an incredible collector's book. I mean, they, there's a picture of Sting. And down the bottom, when Sting first started with the uh, Ultimate Warrior as the uh, as the Blade Runners, and I got Wally to sign this. Uh, Wally is uh, undergoing, not Wally's in the middle of uh, some pre pretty serious health problems. And I was thinking about him today and I took this book out. So we want to wish everyone here at Aptor's Alley and Wally, if you're watching this in Japan, we all wish you the best road to health. Domo arigato for your friendship as well. So this past weekend, I was in Waynesboro, Virginia for Awesome Wrestling Entertainment. And what an awesome show it was. I want to thank all the, uh, first of all, I want to thank the promoter, Doug Ward, for inviting me down and having me do an uh, Aptor's Alley segment in the ring with uh, the Four Horsemen, Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, J.J. Dillon, and Lex Luger. And I especially want to thank all the fans that I was so flattered that so many of you fans remembered me, not just from my days in the magazines and the print magazines, but for all the videos that are on onewrestlingvideo.com. And it was so great to talk to so many of you and become Facebook friends and Twitter friends with so many of you. So that's fantastic. My birthday weekend October 20th. My birthday is actually on October 22nd on that Monday. I will be back in Waynesboro. Uh, promoter Doug Ward has brought me back for the Night of the Icon. Sting, yeah, and some other legends will be there. If you go to the Awesome Wrestling uh, Entertainment Facebook page, you can find out a lot more information and who else is going to be there. But thank you so much. You people make me feel so incredible. So, yeah, I've changed the name of this video podcast from the Aptor Mag to Bill Aptor's Video Magazine Podcast. It makes more sense because it's not associated with the magazines. I still love the magazines, but this is a, a it's a different format. It's a video magazine, and I'm doing it, so that's what we're going to call it. All right, so let's get to the uh, let's get to the headlines and welcome everybody that follows us every week here, 7 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. And if you're watching from overseas, I really appreciate that you've stayed up late. Let's go to the headlines. We have a lot to talk about today. We have two terrific guests. We have a new segment on the show, a new magazine segment called Road Stories. And my first guest who will tell some road stories Back from the old Jim Crockett days, probably, is Maganum D.A. I love doing the Nikita Koloff imitation, saying Maganum D.A. And uh, also Short Sleeve Samson. He is one of the, he's one of the midgets on the uh, wrestling scene, on the independent wrestling scene. When I was growing up, there were so many midgets. Sky Lolo, Fuzzy Cupid, Little Brutus. Oh, goodness. So many, and I just want, whatever happened to the Mighty Midgets? 
So short sleeve Samson, who I saw at Awesome Wrestling Entertainment this weekend, will have some answers for us. Maybe, maybe we can get a midget, all time midget top 10 out of him. So let's go right to the headlines so we can uh, get on with our magazine podcast. Um, WrestleCon, WrestleMania weekend. Go to WrestleCon.com. It, it's a huge convention. It's like Comic Con, and it's amazing. There are two major things that have just been released that's going on there. First of all, I will be there at the Awesome Wrestling Entertainment area, and there'll be several big stars there. Uh, I believe uh, Tully Blanchard will be there. J.J. Dillon will be there, and they're just adding more and more people to the uh, AWE side. But this this one got me. This one got me. Let me make this a little more comfortable so I can sit back here. Let's get a little more centered. There we are. Okay. Now I can see all of you better. Hi, everyone. So the headline that I got last night was like, whoa, I'm glad that WrestleCon so I can talk to him. Stone Cold Steve Austin has agreed to be at WrestleCon on WrestleMania Sunday. Stone Cold Steve Austin. And I haven't seen him or talked to him in ages. But if you were kind of on the fence about going to WrestleCon, this should toss you over the fence. And that's the bottom line, people. I can't wait to see him and talk to him and maybe get some, some information from him that I'm looking for. Because you know I go where the news goes. Press release today from uh, Impact Wrestling. And I'm going to read most of it verbatim. Uh, it's dated Toronto slash Los Angeles. Impact Wrestling. The headline is Impact Wrestling versus Lucha Underground is set for WrestleCon weekend. That's pretty, that's pretty damn uh, awesome there, son. Uh, Impact Wrestling announced today a historic co-promotion with Lucha Underground has been set for WrestleCon weekend, scheduled for April 5th to April 8th. And that will be in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, the stars of Impact Wrestling will face off against the stars of Lucha Underground on Friday, April 6th, starting at 9 p.m. Central Time at the Sugar Mill, which is in New Orleans, uh, during what will be the biggest weekend of the year in professional wrestling. And you know that little show called WrestleMania is at the Superdome two weeks after that. Impact Wrestling versus Lucha Underground. Listen to this. If you're not there in person, we'll stream live exclusively, exclusively on Impact Wrestling's Twitch channel, which is www.twitch.tv slash impact wrestling uh, the channel will feature over 10 hours of original daily content for three days during wrestlecon weekend that's great uh including exclusive podcasts and behind the scenes footage uh ed norholm who's the president of impact wrestling said uh we are excited and honored to expand our partnership with AAA and twitch for this groundbreaking promotion with lucha underground um, exclusive coverage from WrestleCon will stream live all weekend on Impact Wrestling's official Twitch channel. Twitch is becoming quite a thing here, as fans will have the opportunity to interact with their favorite stars. The general manager of uh, Lucha Underground, who is um, uh, whoa, do, do, uh, uh, Dorian Roldan, said, We are excited to partner with Impact Wrestling for this very special and unique event. And uh, yeah, this is this is going to be incredible because uh, this is a good move for both Impact Wrestling and Lucha Underground. Uh, in the headlines, also, as you know, on SmackDown, John Cena came in this week, made a big fuss on Monday Night Raw that he needs to get to WrestleMania. He's going to find out. He's going to find a way to get there somehow. And he challenged The Undertaker. He really did. And so he went to SmackDown on Tuesday night. 
and he was put in a match against AJ Styles, non-title match. It was not for AJ Styles' uh, WWE championship. And he was told that if he beat AJ Styles, he would go to fast lane in the um, in the main event where Styles is putting up his championship against uh, Kevin Owens, uh, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, Dolph Ziggler, and now John Cena. And whoever is the champion at the end of that match goes to WrestleMania. Well, Cena wants to go in as champion. So, um, by the way, this is not a headline. This is just an observation. A lot of people on my videos, on one wrestling video, complain once in a while about a video or audio glitch. I don't know about that video or audio glitch, like hearing it out of one ear, et cetera happens until after that is shot. So uh, chill out, all right? And as I mentioned uh, uh, just before that the new name of the show here is uh, uh, Bill Apter's Video Magazine Podcast, but uh, as they call me the OG of the magazines, we're going to like call me B-A-V-M-P, like B-A-V-M-P, all right? <laughs> I love doing that. I love doing that. Um, this gentleman who has written for OneWrestling.com several times and uh, got to get the comb over back again. And he came up with an idea a while ago, and I'm just looking for this on my uh, magazine format here. Came up with an idea and ran it past me, and I said, this is a great idea. So maybe a week or two before this, let me mention this um, on our show here. A gentleman's name is Stephen Goforth, and he is going forth with something amazing. So let me uh, let me double click here and let me read this press release to you from Mr. Goforth. And uh, he asks, who is the greatest tag team in the history of professional wrestling? You don't have to answer that. Uh, now is our chance to possibly find out. Listen to what he's done. By allowing the greatest fans in the world to vote, maybe we can end the debate and establish a true winner. Over the next four weeks, you'll have a chance to vote on a 64, 64 team field of tag teams. Uh, the purpose of this tournament is to recognize and celebrate the rich history of tag team wrestling. So this is even tag teams from way back in the past. The 64 team brackets are published at, now get this down, um chairs to the cranium dot com i love that www dot i'm sorry it's chair let me it, it's not reading right here www dot chairs okay one last time fans let me move this so i can see it www dot chair shot to the cranium chair shots so www.chairshots to the cranium, www.chairshots to the cranium. And uh, starting March 5th, he will publish the first eight matches of the first round for fans to vote on www.chairshots to the cranium.com. We'll also um, have a link to that on onewrestling.com. You can view the results on his, uh, on his website, www.chairshots to the cranium.com or on uh, OneWrestling.com uh, shortly after that tournament. Okay, thank you, Stephen Goforth, for, uh, uh, for letting us be part of that here on OneWrestling.com. Um, before we get to our first guest, uh, it is time right now to go to the... Um, who was the wrestler of the week? It was a busy week in WWE and uh, Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor. Ryan Bowman, the gentleman behind the GorillaPosition.com, one of my favorite websites, every week picks the wrestler of the week. And this week is no exception. Ryan Bowman, here he is with the wrestler of the week. Take it away, as they say in showbiz. Ryan. I'm Ryan Bowman from the GorillaPosition.com, and here's the Aftermag Wrestler of the Week. It's not often that someone so small can make such big history, 
But Alexa Bliss did just that. Good choice. She conquered the cage and became the first winner of the women's elimination chamber match. The little lady known as Five Feet of Fury wowed fans during the contest by delivering her twisted Bliss finisher from the top of the pod in acrobatic fashion so and good. showed off her in-ring savvy as she worked against both Sasha Banks and Bayley at the conclusion of the match. And then, perhaps her greatest feat of all, with the audience adoring her performance and Bliss appearing to this embrace the cheers of the fans, she cemented her status as a rule breaker by cutting a hateful interview on the crowd. Bliss continues to prove critics wrong with an even stronger reign as the Raw Women's Champion than she had as the top female on SmackDown. Heading towards WrestleMania in April, we just might find out if Little Miss Bliss is indeed ready for Asuka. I like how he uh, ends that. Like Gordon Soley used to use the word indeed all the time. Indeed. And he said, we'll see indeed if she's ready for uh, Asuka. Ryan Bowman, again, the GorillaPosition.com. Okay, so now let's turn the page here at the video magazine, and we're going to have our first guest uh, in the new format. Uh, let me get my, my Verizon cell phone here out so we can uh, dial him and get him live on the show here on the after mag and i will get to your questions a little bit later so uh hang on there there'll be plenty of time to do this so um let me get my phone up here and we're gonna call magnum ta search his name on my phone Doo -doo 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 -doo. i've got so many names if anybody ever got a hold of this phone they would be in big trouble i would be in big trouble because everybody's names would be in here. So, all right, let's see if we... Hopefully we'll get a good, clear connection. Is this Magnum TA? This is he. All right, hold on. Let me uh, plug you into a. Can you hear us okay? I can hear you great. Oh, we can hear you great too. You are live on the Bill After Video Magazine podcast. Thank you. It's so good to. And you know, I always, every time I call you through the years, I always start off with Magnum TA. And what do you say? <laughs> you tell it off. That's a, you do a <laughs> you do a great Magnum TA imitation. You really do. That's not bad at all. Welcome, uh, welcome. It's so good to hear your voice. And this past weekend, as I mentioned, I was at Awesome Wrestling Entertainment's big show in Waynesboro, Virginia. And I know you have been on several of Doug Ward's shows, and it had such a great feeling of the old Crockett territory that I had to pick up the phone a few days ago and say. I missed you being there. Well, thank you. I, you know, anytime the, the boys, you know, from that era would all get together, uh, you know, it's really special. And uh, uh, there, that, that was quite a gathering. I wish I could have been there with you guys, but uh, he always on a great show. And like I said, it's always that, that same warm feeling from back in the day when the, the NWA was running and uh, it, was a, it was a whole different atmosphere. Yeah, it was it was it was a, a magic uh, all those years, and uh, I I just loved it. It was one of the best times of my career. There was a magic because not only was the wrestling in the ring such top flight, but the guys were all. It was a team. It was it was oh, a it team. Was. Every, it was like a it's like being a part of the biggest fraternity. Uh, you could ever imagine being part of and, uh, a very unique group of individuals that would, uh, you know, literally do anything in the world to protect each other. It was, uh, it was, it was really special. What, uh, when we look back on your career, where did, I always, I never asked you in all the years I've known you before we get to uh, road stories, which is this segment of our magazine podcast, but I, where did you, pick up or where did you learn or who gave you the idea for the uh, belly to belly? Cause that was your, 
that was your trademark. Yeah, and you know, I, I wrestled amateur, of course, in high school and, and uh, college, and and you know, and had aspirations of one day being an Olympian when I was young, but obviously I didn't take that route. But yeah, but uh, actually, you know, what happened? I was I was working in the ring, and I remember to- Tommy Young was a referee, and and it was uh it was somewhere in Florida, but I've, I've been in business about a year, and I was working with this great big green kid that was like. Almost three hundred. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let, let let let's just clarify by a green kid. We mean someone who was not experienced, because I don't want somebody to think yeah, you were wrestling I'm, wrestling yeah. a Martian. Yeah, yeah. Well, he <laughs> yeah, he, you know, he was too big to be a Martian, but but he obviously had had just a handful of matches or didn't know anything. And I mean, I'd been in the business about a year and a half, which by our standards back then, I was still a rookie. Though I had probably four hundred and fifty matches under my belt <laughs> at that point in time because we worked every day. Yeah. But but nonetheless, and this kid walked into me, we were supposed to be doing one thing and he just couldn't he couldn't get with anything. And I was so frustrated and when he walked into me, I ended up waist walking him and just tossed him like a like a sack of potatoes. And he was like I said, he was pushing two seventy five, three hundred pounds and he had he had no input in it whatsoever. Just I I found that I had this amazing center strength from that I could I could move literally anybody from that position with a with a suplex. Yeah. And and uh it was you know, and I remember the the light bulb going off in my head right then. I said, you know, if I ever get the opportunity to to shine and be on top, this is what I'm gonna use because whether somebody's good, not good, whatever, it ain't gonna make a difference. I can do this to literally anybody I can lock my hands around their waist, I can do this. So the probably the most amazing sight I had seen you do that was when you locked up against Kamala. Nope. Everybody was like, oh my God, is he going to be able to do this to the Ugandan giant? Yeah, he was about 380 yeah. back then. He was a big fella. And uh, and again, it was just the, the way I was built, it was, I was, and I, I mean, I was 240 pounds, you know, by comparison of the monsters I was in the ring with. You know, people have always thought I was much smaller than I was, but I, I banged away pretty hard and, and worked out, you know, for, for years and years to, yeah. to build the strength that I had. And and I, and uh, yeah, yeah, I remember doing that. Come on, boy, they popped in uh, Charlotte out outdoors oh. in that that uh, big venue we were in for the Great American Bash. That yeah. was pretty exciting. Yeah, I, I photographed that, and I got that photo. But uh, he was so big. And I know you really have to grab somebody in the right position to be able to do that. Was there any uh, nervousness ahead of that the moments before in that match? Like last time, last week we had Lex Luger on and he was talking about uh, him slamming Yokozuna and what went into that. So did you have similar nervous feelings about this? You know, I really, to be honest, Bill, I don't mean to sound uh, egotistical or mm-hmm. anything, but back then, if Dusty said, do this. You did. Yeah, it. I never thought he, I did it. It didn't matter what he said to do. I never crossed my mind that I wasn't capable of doing it. So, you know, he could have told me to, you know, climb up to the, to the rafters and jump off and, you know, throw a drop kick. And if he said it, you know, I was committed. And it was the same way with that. Scarier than that was the two times I did it to somebody off the top rope. They had, uh, Bill right. Watts had me catch the missing link. Oh. As he came off the top rope and belly to belly him, and he was a big boy, and flying through the air, and that was that was kind of exciting. And and then in uh, the the Crockett Tag Team Tournament, they had me catch butt off the top rope and belly to belly him. I remember. Yeah. I remember. And uh, so I, I, you know, I had I'd done it enough, and I, you know, I mean, I it, if they asked me to do something completely ridiculous, I mean, I couldn't have done that down great, but I mean, I knew that all the reasonable sized people. Uh, you know, I could do it too. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a good fit for me and my body type and where my strengths were. So. I could just see uh, you going to uh, Dusty or Bill Watts going over to Andre and he say, you want me to do what? That would have been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. that, that would have been, I would have liked to have uh, seen that. Um, so if the belly to belly hadn't come about, what was the finishing hold that, uh, you had in your mind and that you used before that? It would have been the sleeper. Oh, okay. Because, because I, 
when I worked all my years in working security uh, in Virginia Beach, my my first manager was a retired Navy SEAL, and he taught me how to use that, you know, what we call a rear ch- naked choke today, uh, to subdue people and get them out of uh, get them out of the clubs. Wow, I never knew this. Okay. Right. No, no, nobody knew this, yeah. and, and 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 I have used that literally hundreds of times to put people out and, and drag them outside. And it was much more humane than beating them over the head or busting them up or whatever. And they'd wake really? up and they might have a, they might be a little sore, but they didn't, they didn't have any busted lips or broken bones or nothing. <laughs> and uh, so I knew that was my whole card that I was kind of like holding on to because I could do that for a shoot. And uh, matter of fact, um, uh, you know, I know, I know Roddy Piper, you had to use it really well too, but uh, I, I, that was that same kind of thing. I could do that to anybody. Wow, I, and, they, uh, and make it work. That would have been amazing if they had uh, Gordon Soli as a DJ at the club that you were doing that. Indeed, uh, Magnum TA has now taken that big brute out of the club and put him in, <laughs> put him in the sleeper hole. That would have been junior gentleman. He he was a Did special he? guy. I really. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed working with him because he I was Terry Allen back then. That was before Magnum TA had been born into the business. And uh, uh, a year and a half that I was in Florida Championship Wrestling, I got to spend a lot of time with Gordon. He was a special guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. He and I did the uh, original videotape of Lords of the Ring. That was the wrestling's first videotape. And it was thrilling for me to be sitting next to the Dean of Wrestling Broadcasters, uh, Gordon Soley. He was... It was unbelievable. Um, Magnum TA, I know how this came about, but there are a lot of people listening to you here on uh, the uh, Bill Apters video magazine podcast who don't know how you got the name Magnum TA. Of course, back in those days, uh, Tom Selleck, Magnum PI, the big show was on TV. But how did you get that moniker? Well, let me tie that into this story. Because I got thinking about it. You were talking about road stories and everything. And yeah. for me, there was a very unique thing that happened to me when I broke into business. Okay. Somebody said, you know, you got to have a big car. And I've always had sports cars and whatnot. They said, you got to have a big car to be in the business to drop people around and everybody shares rides and all that stuff. So I went out and got this old 98 diesel of all things. Back in the 80s, they had a uh, early 80s, they had a diesel gasoline converted diesel car motor you could get in, in Oldsmobiles. And that car, because I had it, opened up relationships that I would have never had had I not had it. Okay. For instance, when I was going to break in and was going across country, I spent about 30 days in Mid-South, and I drove Jimmy Garvin and, uh, and, and Buzz's little brother, Brett, and I don't remember who else, but we all drove around together for about a month and got to be great friends and Jimmy Garvin and I are, are like still best friends to this day. We established a relationship because of that ride. And then that ride went on to take me up to Portland where I met this monster of a man, Andre the Giant, for the first time because I had the biggest car in the territory. And, you know, when the Giant came in, whoever had the biggest car took the Giant around. So he and I became friends and 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 uh, you know, rode around together for about two weeks while he was in the territory and and uh, just struck up this relationship. And and uh, then when I ended up in Florida about a year and a half later, Andre comes back in again. And because of that initial energy and, and relationship that we created back in Portland, he had, he had a fondness for me. And so we asked him, still had that car, but, uh, but um, uh, Mike Graham had these big old uh, Cadillac limousines. I remember. We, we, we were the Called, one was called the shark yeah. <laughs> and and so andre and i and, and mike we all and we had we had pat tanaka driving us around and uh and, and so anyway one night we all went out and uh as did after matches and and had a few you know had a few cocktails and looked at libations to kind of calm down a little bit yeah. and we ended up in a breakfast shop with andre and andre looked over at me and he says you boss need a name, you need a handle. And I looked at him like, you know, okay. And he said, you look like that guy at that Tom Selleck guy, you should be Magnum TA. Yeah. And he came up with it and he 
And he, I mean, just right out of his mouth. And he said, I'm going back to New York. The senior was still alive. He said, I'm going to talk to him about bringing you in. Then senior, right. Yeah. And so, so I said, man, that sounds awesome. And that sounds great. And, uh, you know, so I was looking for, you know, that to be like, that was going to be my big break. You know, my, you know, Andre gives me this name and uh, this whole thing takes off and, you know, it's going to take off. It's going to be great. But before he could swoop me up and get that deal put together, uh, Paul Orndorff left Mid South rather spontaneously and left the big gaping hole. And Ernie Ladd called me up and said, "You want Paul Orndorff's spot? He's gone." And that's that's where I went. That's where Magnum TA uh, came into being. He used that name for the first time when I when I went there, and you know the rest was history. Yeah, and when you bring that up, and that's a great road story. That really is. Uh, when you bring that up, though. Uh, I always think about, you know, had you changed gear and gone to the uh, back then to the WWF, uh, what a magnificent career you would have had there as well. Well, you know, I, I don't know that I was I, honestly, you know, everything works out for a reason. And it would have been a great place for me to go eventually. Absolutely. But the the, the education I got working for Bill Watts that year and a half I was in Mid-South was the the icing on the cake. Sure. They gave me the tools to know how to work main event angles and 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 you know be you know like Dusty and you know we used to talk about being big money ball players. For for Dusty, I was his Joe Namath. I know I you were quarterback of, I was his quarterback of his team. And and uh so you know it the timing wasn't right. If I had gone up there Anything less than you know, hundred percent, you know, being on top of my game, I could have easily got lost in the shuffle. Yeah. But if if I could have gone, if I could have gone in, uh, you know, certainly after, if I had gone there rather than coming to Crockett mm -hmm. uh, in 1985, ooh, boy, that could have been an interesting thing. Who would have been the dream opponent for you? Well, I, obviously, you know, it it, it wouldn't make sense then. But I mean, the dream opponent for me was Hubby, because he was the antithesis of everything I was. Well, you're, you're, he was, you're a, he was a, hold he on. He was a cartoon character. Hold player. on, your phone drifted. Say that. Uh, who was it again? That's all right. I, I, I said Hogan was like the oh, yeah. polar opposite of everything that I was as far as a performer. He walked and talked and did all the all the things to work the crowd and do the things and you know got a. 10 minute entrance and a 15 minute exit and work yep. a five minute match. Right. And, and I could talk a little bit, you know, I, I could talk to people and, and uh, do the interviews to get them in the building. But when I got them in the building, you know, I gave them a, a, a 30 minute, 45 minute, an hour match, whatever yes. it took to paint the picture that we were trying to sell. So it was such marketably different commodities. I, it, you know, they are, I still got somewhere around, I got that magazine where they had heat and out on the cover, you know, faced off against each yeah. other, uh, you know, in that fantasy match kind of thing. And that would have been neat at the height of, you know, the, you know, the lightning bolt I was riding on to have squared up with him because it would have been great. And he's, you know, he's a showman, he's a worker, and, and he's had, had some very good matches with, you know, the likes of Ric Flair and, yeah. and Bret Hart and, and different folks. But that that's kind of like, the the thing. I mean, there's lots of great guys up there. I love to work. With, I love to work with with uh, you know with Shawn Michaels and and of course. Uh, oh, that would be know, great. Brett. Yeah, that would and because he, him and I were you know he could go and he could go that same kind of pace like I worked with Tully, and he would have been you know just incredible. And so would Bret Hart. I mean, they, both of those guys would have been outstanding. And matter of fact, Bret and I talked about that a couple of years ago. We ran to each other. And he said, you know, that was one of his things. He was really sorry he never got a chance to work with me. Oh, that would have been incredible. But, you know, me being a, uh, and I can say this, I've been in this business a long time. Me being a Magnum TA supporter here is that you against Bret Hart, you against Shawn Michaels, that would have been just incredible. I think we could have had the, the you know, everybody talks about the match that's uh, Steamboat and Savage had. You know, yeah. like you know, that was like one of the greatest matches of all time. Absolutely. The, uh, the, and and hands down, I totally agree. The difference, though, in Steamboat and I is that Steamboat is just this amazing artiste. You mm -hmm. know, he just 
fluid and and just like you know it's like watching uh, Barishnikov dance. Yes. I mean, he's just yeah. so amazing. And w- when you watch back me, it was more like you knew that there was going to be a fight, and it was going to be brutal. And they were going to walk out there talking about, you know, did, did, did that go like it was supposed to? Gosh, they were really mad. You know, they're going to they're just going to make them scratch their head. <laughs> so I, I would have been a little bit different. And I think Brett could have worked that way with me. Uh, you know, I mean, because, I, I mean, you know, everybody will, will attest to the fact I work very snug. They'll watch, uh, you know, drill that believability thing in, into me as did Eddie Graham. And, uh, you know, you weren't going to. You weren't going to see through anything I did. And most of the guys that worked with me, you know, kind of could attest to that because, yeah, I was pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I listen, I photographed so many of your matches at ringside. Uh, there's always that fine line that this is, as they call it, a shoot or a work. And your matches looked like a shoot when you were against somebody. It, you really did. So, well, it was, it was your intensity and it was my thing. And, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think, you know, in, in respect, and I look back and I, I like watch the character that Steve Austin was able to develop and be so successful with. And I was kind of that heel baby face, you know, going that way with the Bob Geigel thing, the things you and I had done, yes, you know, a couple little yes. things on camera. Yeah. And I could have been really comfortable in that. I couldn't have been, I couldn't have gone up on the turnbuckle and flipped the birds to everybody in the building. Uh, but I could have certainly been very anti-establishment. And and you know some other people could relate it to. Yeah, do you uh, you know on that, on you that were level. a you were a good guy, but you had there was an edge to you that people saw that you could get upset and angry. And I think that's why he took me out of that that like uh, like the rock and roll express. You know, had the team boppers and all that stuff, and little girls squealing. But the guys could relate to me. As well as you know the you know the girls and all that stuff and the attraction thing trying to you know stir up, but the guys could relate to me because there was a they like that tough guy thing and they like to see somebody they fight from the from the bottom up. Yeah, and that's yeah. how we had you know we made we made each other in the ring every night, but I always you know let those heels get their heat and and work it work it work it work it, work it. So we got the most out of everything we did, and and uh, you know that was that was the that was the style of the day. You know? yeah, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know whether they could sit through it today. But no, it's a different sure audience. Made... Different audience today. Yeah, different absolutely. Audience today. The, uh, the dream match for me, uh, a Magnum TA dream match, if somebody asked me, uh, Magnum in his prime against someone else in his prime, would have been Magnum TA in one corner and the other corner, Jack Briscoe. Oh, oh, oh. yes. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, Jack. Oh my gosh, yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I traveled with Jack and Jerry when I was in Florida, but but, I, but see, I had never seen Jack work as the world champion. When I saw Jack, he was just having fun. I didn't see him doing the single serious competitive light he was as oh. world champion. And I watched back some of those old that old footage now, and he was awesome. Just his matches against Dory Funk Jr. The classics, you could have, that could have been you as well. So, uh, yeah. Well, thank I, you. That's, yeah. that's quite a compliment. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, before we turn the page here, do you have one more uh, road story you'd like to tell? Well, the, my, my funniest thing that I that I, I take back and I laugh now, you know, all the, how everybody's so safe about everything and worried about this and worried about that. But Dusty and I and Barry traveled together like the three amigos. Barry Wendell. I don't know, right? Yeah, yeah, Barry with him for like six months, eight months straight. And we were just inseparable. And we used to always talk about all this cowboy stuff, this, that, and the other. And we were going to go buy a place out in Billings, Montana when we were tired and all this stuff we were going to do. And one night we're coming back across, you know, like Yeehaw Junction. And Dusty <laughs> says, you boys ever hopped to, he said, y'all ever hopped the freight? And of course, you know, we never hopped them, flipping freight ever. And it's moving, like, moving pretty good. And even Dusty, we all get up on it. And then we realize that we've left the car running yeah. out there in the middle of nowhere. And the longer we sit on that thing, the farther we got to go back to get <laughs> in the car. <laughs> and there might have been a little alcohol involved. And it, it was, uh, you know, but nobody fell off and got killed and, and or got hurt. And uh, it was, but, you know, I've, I've only jumped a freight one time in my life. And I'm honored to say it was with the American Dream Dusty Rosenberg. <laughs> what was, what? Wait a minute. What was the finish, though, with the car? 
the finish was we 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 peeled off and we realized we had to jump off this thing. It was now moving a pretty good clip. I uh, think we had to walk about a mile and a half back to get back to the car. <laughs> That's a great story. That's a great. Uh, briefly before we let you go, tell everybody uh, where you're living these days and what are you doing these days. Well, I, I, I you know put down roots here in Charlotte, North Carolina, yeah. back in you know, 1984 when I moved here and and uh, you know, raised kids here and. And have lived in three different homes. And anyway, I'm still here in Charlotte. I've been working for a company called Moss Tech Network Solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an international company in, in telecom construction. And I'm their quality manager for what they call the Atlantic market, uh, poetically enough, which is North and South Carolina. Right. So uh, I, I will have been, I've been with them 10 years now and very blessed and fortunate to work for a good company that uh, takes good care of myself and my family. And, and uh, I, our, our twins are 10 years old, so I will wow. be hopefully uh, be able to remain gainfully employed long enough to get them up and through school. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Are you on social media where fans can get in touch with you? Yeah, I, I'm on. Uh, I've got a Twitter account that's uh, that's verified, so you can go on Twitter and, and look for Magnum TA, and it's the one with the check mark. And um, uh, I've got a uh, Instagram as well, and a, and a Facebook, which is. Which is uh, maxed out. Which has, those are just little accounts. But uh, but anyway, I, I keep up with the fans through there, and I try to I try to you know uh, interact where I can, when I can, and it's it's always nice to hear you know some of the stories and stuff that these the guys have grown up now, and they're telling their their own kids all about what we did back you know way back when, and they're showing them on you know the WWE Network, yeah, and oh yes, matches, yeah, it's uh, it's just so cool. Yeah, I'm so. I'm so thankful that, you know, that that has kind of immortalized all that body of work and it's just not lost. And you got to you know, find an old VHS tape to watch it. Now you can you know, turn on, turn on that library and watch whatever you want when you want to watch it. At only nine ninety nine a month, which is seriously killer for what they have on that network. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, a lot of, a lot of guys belly ache about it in the beginning, but uh, really oh. it, it is immortalized and made everybody, uh, you know, current again in, in 2018. I mean, which is nuts, 32 years after the fact. You know, people walk up to me and talk to me about the I Quit match and the best of seven and Ric Flair and all the Woody shit it could have. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Um, two quick questions from fans here as I'm scrolling down and I'm uh, we're trying to move on with the show, but these are important. Did Magnum ever wrestle uh, Harley Race? Yes, I did. Russell Harley race in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and, and uh, the uh, old arena here. We only we we only wrestled one time, but it was uh, it was great, and uh, you know it was, it was something that obviously remember stands out in my mind with the thousands of matches I had. Uh, and I remember it well, and uh, you know he was just awesome. He's still somebody that I've got great admiration for. Yeah, yeah, Harley race, and the other name that's popped up in about fifteen IMs here. Is the name Tully Blanchard? Oh yeah, the the feud, the feud, the end all feuds. I mean that sure that uh, that was just you know that was the most special chemistry I've ever had you know working with anyone. And Tully's uh, complete desire to be the most dastardly heel that he could be, <laughs> yeah. and combined with my intensity was just uh, it, it was a, it was a pretty amazing combination. It was. It truly was. Thank you for all the years of uh, standing and posing, especially with that huge 9,000-pound uh, UWF belt over your shoulder and uh, all the interviews you did for me and everything. I can't. You've been a friend forever and, and, and also a, a great professional contact for me as well. So, uh, Well, I love you, man. And, you too. Uh, anytime you, too. you need me, you call me. You too. Anything you need from uh, wonderful Willie here, if you will. You know, I still that do that voice. So uh, we were all, we were all in that dressing room. Magnum TA, I'm going to uh, hit the uh, button now here, and uh, uh, we will see you again soon. Magnum TA, boy, what you talk? I was originally when I called him to do this uh, interview, um, it was going to be like a 15. Yeah, let's. Yay! That, he was good. I mean, what? He's still, boy, I, I'll tell you something again, uh, against uh, 
uh, Jack Briscoe, and I, I'm so, Richard Bain, I'm, I forgot to ask him against Bockwinkel. I, he never wrestled against Bockwinkel as far as I know, but boy, that would have been an incredible match too. We need to move on right now. Um, it's time to go to um, this week's t Volt, Travis Volt, one of my favorite reporters. Um, this week he is here with the WWE Monday Night Raw top 10 t Volt. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Howdy. Bill and All hello right. fans. t Volt's here, and thanks for turning the audio page to the ranking section for the After Mag Raw top 10. Now, these are compiled by my team and I, so if you have any feedback, please tell us on Twitter at PW Paper Champion. Now to that top 10. All right, let's hear Number it. Number 10, and the lack of the roster depth and or use of it left me no choice but to put the Raw Tag Team Champions in. That's right, the bar. Here's a question. Where is the revival? Number nine. Interesting. Ray Wyatt, who took on two men on Raw. I'm checking it Number out. eight. Woken, Matt Hardy. Will this feud with Wyatt please be deleted? Or will they be joining forces? Number seven, and down in the rankings following his loss to Strowman, Elias. Number six, following his victory over the tired Miz, Finn Balor. Yes. Number five goes to the first guy to pin Miz on Monday, Seth Rollins, who was sporting his new Monday Night Rollins t-shirt. Number four goes to the monster among men after an impressive elimination chamber and eliminating Elias Monday. That's right, Braun Strowman. The monster Number three goes to the men. big dog in the yard after both winning the Elimination Chamber and talking down to Lesnar, Roman Reigns. Number two goes to The Miz. Are his days of being Intercontinental Champion limited? Hmm. Number one, of course, is the Universal Champion, the very absent beast, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Hey, yes. fans, I hope you enjoyed. Bill? Back to you. Well, thank you very much. And now let's go Good swimming evening, in the boys. water. The Gonzo Shark. Shark again. What you got? For After Mag Video Podcast. Yes. And it's time to rank the top 10 for this week on SmackDown Live in the men's division. All right, let's hear it. So let's not waste any time and kick it off with number 10, none other than the Viper, Randy Orton. Okay. At number nine, the Pancake Lovin'. Unicorn Riding, Bootio Tossin, <laughs> New Day. At number eight, two of the baddest dudes on the SmackDown Live tag team division, the Bludgeon Brothers. Ooh, scary. At number seven, dropping down a spot from last week, is the prize fighter, Kevin Owens. Yeah. At number six, the show off, Dolph Ziggler. He's getting better. Dropping down a spot to number five is the lone wolf, Baron Corbin. At number four, the SmackDown Live tag team champions who cut one hell of a promo on SmackDown Live this week. They let did. me tell you. They did. Is the Usos. Ooh, so. At number three, pile driving his way right into the rankings is none other than the face that runs the place, mm -hmm. John Cena. Yeah. At number two, I can see the that. glorious WWE United States champion, Heavyweight champion, Bobby Roode. And number one? And still at number one, because it is the house that AJ Styles built, is none other than the WWE champion, the phenomenal AJ Styles. All right. The WWE champion. You can champion. follow me on Twitter at Gonzo Shark One. Facebook.com slash Gonzo Shark One. Find all of my material at OneWrestling.com. It is there. Vince Russo's The Brand. Until next time, this is Gonzo Shark checking out. We're not going to let Gonzo Shark Good go. Evening, humanoids. We have this got Gonzo Shark. We've got him here with the women's podcast. Ratings. We're coming off the heels of a historic first ever women's elimination chamber match Sunday night. And it's time for me to administer my weekly dose of truth. Yes. And rank the WWE women's division 
for this week. Let's go, Gonzo. So let's get down to the brass. Tacks. All right. Coming in at number 10. Who is it? After a great performance in the Elimination Chamber and a death-defying leap is former oh. WWE Women's Champion Mickey James. Yeah, amazing. Coming in at number 9 after a, another great performance in the Elimination Chamber is Sonya Deville. Yeah, tough. Number 8. Absolution's Mandy Rose. At number seven, the hugger herself, Bailey. Sitting strong at number six Bailey to Bailey. for the second week in a row is none other than the boss, Sasha Banks. At number five, the Riot Squad's Ruby Riot. Yeah, another tough girl. Bumping down a spot to number four. After her loss to Oscar at the Elimination Chamber, is Nia Jax. Revenge. At number three, moving up a spot from last week, is the Empress of Tomorrow, Oscar. Yes. Dropping down a spot to number two is SmackDown Live Women's Champion Charlotte Flair. And moving in, she dropped down to number one. After a great performance at the Elimination Chamber and a great performance on Raw. And that is? None other than Raw Women's Champion, Alexa Bliss. Yeah, yeah. Follow me on Twitter at GonzoShark1. Facebook.com slash GonzoShark1. You can find all of my material at OneWrestling.com. All right. And Vince Russo's The Brand. The Gonzo Shark. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Bill After oh. and OneWrestling.com for giving me this opportunity every week. And until next time, Gonzo Shark checks <coughs> out. Gonzo Shark swimming in the waters here at One Wrestling. So this past weekend in Virginia, I had the opportunity to see another old friend, but he's not an old friend. He's a young guy. Uh, he's a midget wrestler. Called uh, his name is Short Sleeve Samson. I'm getting the after phone ready here. By the way, if somebody did ask me this last week, who's the picture on there? That's the lovely Lexi Rose. That's my baby. Um, so I I was talking to Short Sleeve and letting him know when I was growing up, um, there were Madison Square Garden shows. Let me just get his phone number up here. Madison Square Garden shows. Every show, they had the Mighty Midgets, and the fans would love to watch the Midgets. Sky Low Low, Little Brutus, Fuzzy Cupid, Little Beaver. But there is a lack of Midgets in pro wrestling now. So I want to, let's call, let me get this into the speaker. Let's call Short Sleeve Samson now, if he's around. I told him I'd be calling. Let's discuss the state of midget wrestling with Short Hey, Joe, how's it going? Is that you, Short Sleeve Samson? Is that you, Mr. Apner? It is Apner, another yeah. one who puts an N in it. I'm telling since Dusty Rhodes. I'm sorry, I know. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. no, it's a, it's a Dustyism because since Dusty Rhodes one time came on TV and said, This is my buddy, Willie Apner, if you will. People put an N in it. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So it was great to see you this weekend at uh, uh, Doug Ward's Awesome Wrestling Entertainment event. And oh, it was it was great seeing you as well. Well, thank you. I mean, yes, I'm always I'm always excited to uh, go when you're on a show that I happen to be on and get to Likewise. work get together and all. So Likewise. Likewise. It. And by the way, I did, uh, uh, and shortly saw this, uh, just to mention some other news here, I did a an actor's alley in the ring with uh, Teddy Long. He's been named the interim general manager of Awesome Wrestling Entertainment, and we will have him here on the on the uh, Bill Apter Video Magazine podcast somewhere in the next few weeks. Uh, all right, player. So you and I were talking about. <laughs> I was telling you that when I was growing up, every show in the WWWF had a midget match. Every one of them. Sky Low Low, mm -hmm. Little Beaver, Fuzzy Cupid. And uh, the state of midget wrestling today, I know you, and that's really uh, about it in terms of 
midget wrestlers. So if you could, for a few moments, could you give us the state of midget wrestling? Where is it today? Who are your opponents? Where are the midgets appearing? Well, I mean, that's a really great question because of the fact that that's why I asked we it. don't see midget wrestling. <laughs> and of course, of course. That's why you're the number one uh, when it comes to the journalism well, and, thank you. and, and thank everything. You. So, no, seriously. Um, you know what? As far as. Wait a minute, uh, wait, wait a minute. I got, I got, I, hold on. I, I just got a uh, Dougie Fresh Richards in the chat box here said, call Hornswoggle. That's, we can't call him on a. On a uh, on a three-way call here, but we will get him on. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You know what? Maybe Dougie Fresh Richards can call Hornswoggle uh, tonight, and then this way you can call him another night. You yeah, know? We, we can do that. We can do that. So <laughs> so give us the state of midget wrestling. Yeah. So, um, you know, we don't see it on weekly television, and uh, we don't see it on WWE, whether it's Raw or SmackDown or NXT. We don't see it in TNA. We don't see it in Ring of Honor. We don't see yeah. it in New Japan. Um, to, to see midget wrestling, you would have to either go to a uh, independent show where there happens to be, you know, a midget uh, wrestling match on it, or you would have to go and see uh, it at a all midget wrestling uh, show. Now there used to be is, one, the, the Micro Midget Federation. If I remember there is. correctly, actually, yeah. that's uh, right now. There's probably about six of them uh, here in the state. Um, and I actually, uh, run my own company now, uh, that oh. I started up just over three years ago called the Midget Wrestling Warriors. Um, Midget Wrestling uh, Warriors. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, sure. Um, you know, and, um, the thing about it is again, fans love midget wrestling. Um, like you alluded to just a few minutes ago, uh, midget wrestling has always been, one of the uh, the, the crowd draws, um, yeah. whether it's uh, you know the young or the old, everybody really really enjoys it and everything. And uh, it's unfortunate that at this time you don't see it on mainstream television. But at the same, uh, you it's not um, because it's not oversaturated. When you do see it or when it is advertised, it's always going to be a sellout. It's always going to be. A guaranteed crowd pleaser and a crowd draw. But where, where other than you, who I know, uh, where, who are some of the other uh, midgets that work uh, wrestle on the circuit? For example, in your Almighty Midget Warrior Company. Well, uh, the, the new young guys that are you know coming into this business, you have uh, Prince Akeem out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Okay. You have Rob the Giant out of Providence, Rhode Island. You have Mini Fusion out of El Paso. Wait a minute. Texas. Wait, wait, wait. Have... Back, back up. Number two, you had there Rob the Giant is a midget wrestler. Well, the, the whole oxymoron. See, for, <laughs> for midget wrestling, it has to be just at the five foot level, you I know? Knew that. And uh, Rob, Rob is probably about 4'11 and 7'8. Uh, yeah, so therefore, he considers himself to be the giant among midgets. I love now, that. That's I'm not. I'm not sure if he's referring that because of his height, or if he's referring that as to his his character's ego. Okay. But um, you know, that's definitely what he builds himself as. All right. Now, did you when you were uh, when you were a kid, uh, what midget wrestlers were you exposed to uh, watching? On TV, oh, the, the 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 classics. I mean, whether it was uh, Little Tokyo, Lord Littlebrook, Little Beaver, right. the right. Haiti Kid, Sky Low Low. Yes. Um, you know, uh, then you have like Fuzzy Cupid, Tom Thumb, uh, the Irish Leprechaun. Uh, right. You know, uh, yeah. Tiger Jackson. You know, all these guys. Little that, Louie. Little Louie. Yeah, yeah, forgot yeah, about it. I don't want to forget about him. With him a few times. Yeah. Yes, no, Little Louie. Little Louie, obviously. <laughs> somebody, wait, wait. Uh, somebody, Kelly Matthews just chimed in, Ray Mysterio. <laughs> <laughs> Good line, <laughs> I Kelly. Like, I think Ray Mysterio is like 5'1", like, uh, so oh, he's just right out of that open. category. <laughs> Great line. So, uh, 
so where where can people uh your company uh midget wrestling warriors uh is there a website or a facebook page that they can find out more information yes yes there is uh we have facebook uh which is midget wrestling warriors uh twitter we are at warrior midgets instagram is also midget wrestling warriors and uh in month of march we actually have uh shows coming up uh, for those that may be in our areas on March 10th. We will be in Houston, Texas at um, Sam Houston's racetrack <coughs> on March 17th. Now, by, the way, not the, will, by the way, not that Sam Houston, not uh, the wrestler, but Sam. No, no, no. Okay, not okay, no, okay no. go ahead. <laughs> no, definitely not the wrestler. That's just the name of the, uh, the horse racetrack right. that we will be uh you know, performing at okay. and everything. Um, March 17th, we will be at the Seven Feathers Casino in Canyonville, Oregon. Wow, I didn't know it. Um, March 23rd, we will be in Chilliwack, British Columbia, Canada. And March 24th, we will be at the uh, Cloverdale Fairgrounds in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. That's great. I I, so, I really didn't know about that. So that is the state of uh, of midget wrestling. Where can people find you? Before I let you go, where can people find you on? Uh, and by the way, you will be at WrestleCon at the Awesome Wrestling Entertainment Table along with me and Tully Blanchard and JJ Dillon and a lot of other uh, uh, wrestlers. Yes, yes, we will. We'll be hanging out together at WrestleCon, which I'm excited about yeah, as well as I think. Uh, Barry Windham will be joining us, Simon Gotts, and uh, C.W. Anderson as well. Yes, yes, that's great. Tell tell everybody yeah. where they can find you on social media. Yes, yeah, so I am on Facebook and Instagram under Short Sleeve Samson. I am on Twitter under um, AWE Samson, at AWE Samson, as well as they can uh, check out my uh, my website, which is also shortleavesamson.com. Okay. I try to make it easy and not a repetition, you know? That that it sounds great. Yeah. And you people, <laughs> when you can get out, when you can get out to see midget wrestling, to me, there should be a midget match on every card, on every show. It it's just great. And especially, you know, back in the WWF, um, if you were 13 years old or younger, you couldn't get into a show in New York state. So even, and they had the midgets every month. So even the adults enjoyed the midgets. And I used to love photographing them. And I think we need to start a movement to get a midget match on every card. I agree. I, I totally agree with you, Bill. You know what? We have all these movements going on right now and everybody has a good reason for them. I'm not uh, minimizing that, but I think there needs to be another me too movement you know what i mean for uh you know midget wrestling and, and everything yeah so the, the, maybe we'll just we'll just start that tonight that's it so if you fans want to see midget wrestling coming to your arena where should they should they get in touch with you yes yes they can uh feel free to reach out to me at any of my uh social medias uh okay. obviously the easiest one would be either uh, through my Facebook, which is Short Sleeve Samson, or through my website, which is also shortsleevesamson.com. All of my social media, I run myself. I don't have somebody do it. And even for the fans uh, that just want to send me some sort of, of message or whatever, I reply back to everybody. Right. My, fe my feeling and my belief is without them, I couldn't do what I do. So I appreciate them. Well, thank you. So to all you promoters out there, a midget match on every card. We got I it. I agree. Short sleeve, thank you so much. And we will definitely, uh, uh, to enhance this, we will have you on every few weeks uh, to talk about midget wrestling and uh, and talk about wrestling with you here in, uh, uh, on the uh, Bill Actor Video Magazine podcast. I really appreciate it, Bill. Thank you so much. Thanks for having and me And we'll on. see you at the, we'll see you at WrestleCon. Yes, I'll see you in just a few weeks. All right. Thank you, short sleeve. All right, time to turn the page right now. And uh, uh, if you remember, last week we had on uh, Ian Riccoboni, who is along with uh, Colt Cabana, one of the uh, broadcasters, hold on, of Ring of Honor. And I said we call him this week uh, to talk about 
Women of Honor. So he will be the uh, uh, the back of the book, the back of the magazine today. Hopefully he will answer. Two ringy dingies. Three rings. He may not. He may not be there. Let's see. Hi, you've received your money. I'm not able to take your call right now, but if you leave your name, number, and a brief message, I'm going to get back to you. Oh, Thanks. wait a minute. Here, here he is. Is that you? This is me. We just, we all heard your, your, uh, your answering machine. <laughs> we did. It was on. Ian Riccoboni, uh welcome back to the, uh, the last page of uh, this week's Bill After Video Magazine podcast. And uh, uh, I was trying to get in touch with you actually uh, yesterday to schedule a time with you, but uh, we missed each other. So I'm glad you're here. We don't have a lot of time this week, uh, but what I did want to talk to you about this week is, as promised last week, uh, we're going to skip the rankings this particular week. What I would like to talk about is the people who are in the dark about women of honor. Oh, you know, Women of Honor is something that has been brought to the forefront in Ring of Honor over the course of the last almost three years now. And we, we've we had women's wrestling since 2002. And, and Sumi Sakai, who's one of our great wrestlers right now, uh, was at the forefront of that taking a Simply Luscious back at the Murphy Rec Center in June of 2002. In Philly, um, sure. In Philly, yeah. And these days, you know, the... The athleticism and just the you know just the elite athletes that we're getting in women of honor, um, you know, just show how far wrestling as a whole is coming. Not just you know women's professional wrestling, but you know the women of honor. It's been something three years in the making. We're going to crown the very first champion very very soon. That's what I'm uh, talking about. Yeah, yeah, and the tournament has begun. Um, we are in the round of sixteen. On television coming up in the uh, the next few weeks, you'll see Tennille Dashwood, formerly known as Emma. Uh, she competes against Stacey Shadows, and well, she just had a, a dynamic debut, kind of shocked the world at Honor Reign Supreme when we were back in North Carolina. And, uh, you know, it, it's become a destination, just as Ring of Honor has, for the men and women of Honor is, is attracting this world-class talent, whether it's Emma, yeah. whether it's Mayu Iwatani, uh, who's captured every championship in stardom. Uh, you know, the, the prestigious women's organization in, in Japan. Japan. Yes. Uh, so, Mayu, uh, we have uh, Azuki, we have Kigetsu. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. Hannah Kimura, um, Oedo Tai, you know, the uh, the great faction that, that Kigetsu is the leader of. Um, so just, you know, all of these wonderful athletes. And they complement the athletes that have grown in our division so well, like Diana Perrazzo, like Mandy Leon, Kelly Klein. Uh, January. So it's just this amazing blend of, of talent that has really took it upon themselves to raise their game yeah. and in turn has attracted these these other great athletes. And I, it's any woman's game to win this first ever Women of Honor Championship. Yeah, this is great. I mean, the whole women's movement from uh, WWE to Ring of Honor and so many, uh, Shimmer, all the, all the indies, it's just wonderful what's happening with them. Uh, before we go, um, some uh, news headlines from Ring of Honor going on this week. Oh, absolutely. So this week is Manhattan Mayhem. And if you're a member of Honor Club, which you can subscribe to for $9.99 a month or the VIP package, $120 a year, you can see Honor Club this week. And then if you're a VIP member, you get next week's pay-per-view 16th anniversary for free. Um, if you're just That's a regular member, that $9.99 subscription, you get it for 50% off. But everybody who's a member gets me. And for free, uh, it's just an amazing match. Ultimate Mayhem is going to be the main event. Bullet Club, which is Marty Skrull, Adam Page, and the Young Bucks. Yeah, I it's been a split. Uh, so Cowell and Censored and then Shane Taylor. Wow. And, and where this is taking place in uh, uh, in Manhattan, correct? It is. It, it'll be at the Manhattan Center's Hammers Ballroom. And uh, it's sold out months in advance. And you know, this is one of our most interactive events of the year. We call it the experience. So fans, uh, up to tonight, up to the end, if you're listening on. Well, if, on you, Thursday, if you're listening, if you're listening, what date is the show? So this, this show is uh, Saturday, March 3rd. 
So okay. if you're listening on, on Thursday, March 1st, you can vote through midnight on who you want to see be the guest color commentator for the main event or who you want to see be Kenny King's partner, partners against Silas Yelling for City Bruiser and Brian Malonis. Or, uh, you know, we have a number of great stipulations that fans can vote on. You know, you could pick, you could pick what kind of match Cody versus Flip Gordon is. Oh, that's going to be a be lumberjack, great. Yeah. two out of three falls. Or uh, if Flip wins, he's on the all in event <laughs> coming up in September. Which is going to be so, great. And w- is there a, uh, the all in event, uh, has there been a site decided for that yet? You know, they've been hinting. Um, you know, there, there's a, a site in the Midwest. Chicago uh, has been, been mentioned, yeah. Yeah, Chicago has been mentioned quite a bit, but I know Tokyo was in the running. I know Dublin was in the running. I know yeah. Los Angeles and Long Beach were in the running also. Um, and Willow, but, um, Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. <laughs> right down there at the uh, Where the I used Grove to see Park. you at the mall, all right. <laughs> you know, I don't know if it's big enough. The demand for this, no, they want to get 10,000 seats. They might want to shoot for something that's 16,000, 18,000. Yeah, you know, they, they are. They, they are. Uh, from what I've heard about this whole show, this is something that could take place in, uh, as they used to say in wrestling, at any major arena in the United States or Japan or Australia or oh, anywhere course. else, Ireland. Uh, Ian, we're uh, unfortunately we're running out of time for uh, uh, for this week, but uh, we'd love to have you back next week to go back to uh, giving us uh, the rankings and uh, to talk about the show that is happening uh, this week, uh, depending upon when you're all watching this. So uh, would that be uh, agreeable for you? Absolutely. I'd love to join. And if you're, uh, if you're on the fence, what's the world? ROHwrestling.com. Join the Honor Club. Catalog of past events. You get all of the ROH on tour events like Manhattan Mayhem for free. If you're a VIP member, you get all the pay-per-views for free, which includes uh, 16th anniversary, uh, super card of honor, Cody versus Kenny, and so much more. Um, we want to thank you so much for being here with us again and spending time. I'm ve- I'm very uh, Willie of honor here. Is very honored that uh, uh, that you're doing this with us uh, so many weeks in a row. Oh, it's my pleasure, absolutely. All right, Ian Riccaboni. Did I pronounce it right? You sure did. I used to pronounce <laughs> it Riccaboni. Uh, but Ian Riccoboni from Ring of Honor, and uh, please send regards to uh, your broadcast partner, Colt Cabana, from everyone down here at After's Alley. Oh, will do. Thanks, Bill. Great talking to you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ian Riccoboni, we are, you know, we're so far into this week, we didn't have a chance to go into mm. our um, classic audio that I had set up, so we'll, we will, uh, Fit that in next week. Now, with all your questions, here's what I'm going to do because there are so many questions. So many of you have asked me just to come on live one night and just do a uh, ask me anything here. So one night next week, I'll, I'll give you all advance notice. I'm just going to pop on. It might be this, might even be this weekend. Uh, I'll try and give advance notice just to come on and uh, answer your questions because there are a lot of questions. And what we're trying to do here on the uh, Bill After Video Magazine podcast is stick to the uh, news and magazine format. Before we go, um, once a month, I am back in print, Total Wrestling Magazine. Go to their Facebook page, and you can learn how to how to get the Total Wrestling Magazine print magazine. I'm in a uh, column called the, actually I'm right on the cover. Look at that. Uh, Bill After returns to print magazine with the After Files every month. Also, I will be at WrestleCon in uh, New Orleans at the uh, Awesome Wrestling Entertainment table. And I'll be all around New Orleans uh, the whole WrestleMania weekend, be at the uh, Hall of Fame, uh, WrestleCon, um, down on Bourbon Street at the hotels. I will be there. And also, don't forget, and I, I hope you'll be able to see this, that my book is Wrestling Fixed. This way. <laughs> is Wrestling Fixed. I Didn't Know It Was Broken is still on sale at your favorite bookstore or um, 
You can get it on Amazon and the audio version with me uh, I, that I narrate the audio version and I do a lot of my imitations of wrestlers when I'm talking about certain wrestlers. This is available on Amazon as is the book. So before I go, several things that we learned tonight. Support. I saw on the, um, uh, on the chat box here, do I want to watch midget wrestling? No. If you would have grown up where I grew up in New York and watching the midget wrestlers, you would say yes. So uh, support midget wrestling, support pro wrestling, indie wrestling, WWE, uh, Impact Wrestling, Ring of Honor, all the independent groups, CCW, I was going to say ECW too. And thank you for, uh, I'm just getting the cursor for the end stream here. Uh, I really, the board needs to be bigger. <laughs> I'll work on that, Dougie Fresh. And support, thank you so much for your supporting of me and uh, everything I do, uh, onewrestling.com, onewrestlingvideo.com, and all our correspondents, Big Ray Hernandez, uh, Don Murphy, So Ryan Bowman, um, John Osting, so many of them. Uh, we really appreciate it. This is, well, thank you very much, uh, Gavin. Boy, now wait a minute. I've got, you're up late, dude. He's in uh, England, if I'm right. Uh, Gavinitis, are you, you in England, if I remember correctly? Haven't heard from you in a while. And I'm trying to think, it's about 2.15 in the morning there. So uh, thank you. Yep. 2.15 in the morning there, and you're up watching my uh, video podcast. I really appreciate that, and hopefully I'll be coming to England later this year. I, uh, I miss my trips to there. So for everyone here at OneWrestling.com, OneWrestlingVideo.com, thank you so much to Magnum, to Magnum TA. Uh, also, thank you to Shortsley Sanson, uh, Ian Riccoboni, and next week, as always, we will have a special guest, and I like to get guests who um, don't appear on every audio or video podcast, so we've had some uh, some real good ones, and we'll have another one next week, and thank you to all our ranking correspondents, uh, t Volt, uh, Ryan Bowman, of course, for the uh, rest of the week, and uh, the Gonzo Shark, Bill Aber, and... Uh, We'll see you at the matches. Is wrestling fixed? I didn't know it was broken. Neither did I. Really? Got to hit the...